Nowadays, everyone and their grandmother are building and rebuilding junk cars that they picked up at an auction. And if you've ever wondered what these sell for and whether it's worth the gamble, well, today I'm going to show you the real final bid prices of salvage auction exotic and sports cars while exposing one of the major risks involved with buying these so you can decide for yourself if it's something that's worth the gamble. Man, these new Bentleys are insane looking. I think they look way better than the Rolls Royces. They generally cost less than the Rolls Royces. I think that they're more sporty than the Rolls Royces, but yet the Rolls Royces tend to sell a lot better and I still don't understand why. This one is my kind of spec because it's got the V8 in it. Believe it or not, I prefer the V8 over the V12 because it's the same engine that's used in Audi's RS7. It's the same one used in the Lamborghini Urus. Very common engine, one that can be tuned, one that can make insane amounts of power, even more power than the V12 cars. And well, it's not a V12, so you don't have the maintenance headache that comes along with it. Now I'm looking for a water line all over this car. The door has already been opened, so someone's been in it, but I don't see a water line. I do see that the car's sitting very low. This is abnormal, and that's probably because the suspension electronics are a bit wonky and got a little water on them. The top half of it, what I can see from here, looks incredible. When we get inside, did get a little bit of water. Look, they use a metal speaker grill. So water definitely got in. It looks like a pretty low water line. Nothing is lighting up in the interior. Let's see here, carpets, a little crunchy, so definitely got wet. But the seats themselves, yeah, the seats are nice. This is a solid, solid looking car. Let's get in and check it out. When I was reviewing this part of the video, there were some things that started standing out to me and it didn't make any sense on this Bentley. Like the fact that in person it looked really clean and maybe it just had some light water damage, but that suspension sagging and the door not closing, trying to attribute that to the car getting wet. Well, again, it didn't make a lot of sense. So I pulled up a car vertical report and was shocked at the cover up job of this car, as I'm going to show you in a second. But at first, the report just showed us some of the things we already know about this one, like the fact that the car has a damaged history along with a salvage branded title. And one of the good things about it is that it showed it had a recent mileage recording right under 2000, which is really low. And if you're thinking in the mind of a reseller for a car that would retail around $200,000 in good working condition, it could be worth a great gamble at around half that if all we had were some wet carpets. But take a look at these pictures. This is the original auction sale from the insurance company. This Bentley was submerged all the way to the roof and had a clear water line marked, but Obviously, it wasn't marked by the time I got to it, and that's because somebody bought this car. They cleaned it. They did a pretty phenomenal job of that, and then listed it back for sale at the same exact auction. To think I put my hands on this car, and I couldn't even tell the cover-up job that was going on here. So the people that cleaned this up knew what they were doing, and the craziest part about this is that the first sale that this car had at the auction was for $55,000. That was from the insurance company. That's with the water line disclosed. That's with all the muck in the interior. And then the buyers took it. They did that cleanup that we saw. They relisted it at auction. And it took a handful of times, but they were able to sell it for $65,500 a second go around. Someone made $10,000 literally just detailing the heck out of the interior of this Bentley. It's hard to even think that someone paid an over $10,000 price premium on this Bentley simply because they didn't do any research beforehand. If they would have got a car vertical report, this would have saved them over 10 grand and a massive headache. And it goes to show you the importance of getting a vehicle history report before buying a used car, whether it's on Marketplace or at a dealer, and especially if you're shopping at the auctions. Now, I went and linked Car Vertical down in the description box because it is the new school way of vehicle history reports. They're constantly adding new data sources to give you the most comprehensive vehicle history reports, period. And as you just saw, they've even got pictures in the case that like the car does show up at an auction somewhere. So check out Car Vertical at the link in the description. Make sure you use code SAM10 at checkout to get 10% off your vehicle history reports and don't ever get had like this guy did with the Bentley. These two cars are always compared to each other, the Mercedes SL and the Porsche 911. And they're both incredible cars, but if I had to pick one to use every single day for the rest of my life as a daily driver, I'd pick the SL. 
That's a very biased question. You see how I positioned it? Daily driver for the rest of my life. This is the better looking car, the faster car, the more fun car. It's just that this is really comfortable and it's still quick, it's still very capable, and it's fairly reliable. Now this happens to be a really cool spec. This has a target top. And it's very rare you see these 911 spec with the target top. And this one's weird because it's got this plastic all around it and oh, I see something. I don't think you're gonna see a lot. Maybe if you were to take this plastic off, you might see some stuff, but if you look through here, I mean, the glass is all intact. Our issue clearly was an engine burn. I mean, look at all the fins on the spoiler here have some burn marks, and look at the warped rear bumper. I love to see what's underneath the engine cover because the spec on this car, again, Carrera 4S, with the target top is pretty darn rare, and it doesn't look like it was like, well, let's say like this, like that Ferrari right there. This is something that if the fire was put out or went out in a reasonable amount of time, sure, you're gonna have a good amount of work in there, but it could be a really great video series resurrecting something like this. This is paint. This is, yeah, this <laughs> paint. This paint job is actually super, super nice. There was a ton of time and work that went into this. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, but this is a super, super custom Corvette. Felt a little, little bit of paint cracking here on the front, which really, really stinks because again, this is all custom. So in order to get everything to match again, you probably have to take it back to the same guy that did it. Uh, we have what looks to be pretty decent tires on it. And we have a quarter panel issue on a Corvette. That is never fun, especially the fact that it's on the side where the fuel filler cap is. Now let's see if we can get inside the car. Ooh, look, the fiberglass skin is even coming off the door frame here. Maybe the other side We've also got that rear axle issue likely. Those aren't too bad. It's really right there. There's your main problem on this car. Really nice big rear wing. This was somebody's baby. You could just tell by looking at it. The interior is immaculate too. It's got tan interior, smells really nice. Oh look, the interior is painted to match as well. The console here, we do have an auto trans. Just because the amount of time and love put into this car, it should be saved. Uh, it could be done. A guy like V-Tune would knock that quarter panel out. And then you've got one of what I would say is the most unique looking Corvettes to ever exist. Porsche Cayenne looks like a Gen 2 car and it's got a really unique paint color you don't see frequently. And this is usually the front bumper you get with a GTS or a turbo and 80,000 miles. You can see I've already opened the door. When I opened the door to this car, I was treated to a huge surprise. This is not just a turbo, it's a turbo S and the spec, the original spec on this had to have been super custom. We've got these two-tone leather seats the gauges look at those gauges a silver gauge cluster something that you just don't seal out on these cars really really a beautiful gen 2 turbo s you know that i have the gen 1 car it's not very good this looks substantially substantially nicer mind you the car that i'm talking about my personal car well it wasn't cared for very well now a couple other things that are super notable about this car these wheels I don't know if these are factory wheels, but what I do see is a yellow brake caliper. Typically, when Porsche puts yellow brake calipers on a car, they're a upgraded carbon ceramic brake. And looking at the discs, that's sure as heck what they look like. These are usually five figure factory options, sometimes 10, $20,000. So just the brakes alone on this salvage title Cayenne are worth a fortune. If you look at the front end, it's going to be tough to see what the frame looks like under here. It had a pretty nice crunch, but what I do like is that a lot of it happened higher up. Push this hood that way. Usually higher up means a lot of plastics, a lot of brackets. Sometimes you bind the fenders. You can see the fender doesn't line up here very much anymore. Uh, so sometimes you can repair these things like the fenders but of course we got a lot of replacement parts necessary on the front end the fact that it's a porsche cayenne means there's a lot of these parts available for sale on the second hand market but it does mean that they're also fairly expensive especially when you're looking for a turbo front bumper like this and while you see a lot of porsche cayennes of this generation on the road this is a very very special one the rear end is basically perfect look at the exhaust tips 
this rear brush valance, Turbo S badging. Again, the color is something else. Really beautiful in person. We've got this nice Turbo S wing. Right off the bat, this is a huge find because these cars don't really trade hands for a lot of money on the secondhand market. And usually like a Porsche Cayenne, even a Turbo is bundled in with the rest of them that are clearly not as special as this one behind us. So it'll be really interesting to see what this one sells for. So this car looks awful, but I don't think it's as bad as it looks. You see the front frame here? Here's our major tub right here, and it's not bad. I mean, it's not perfect. You see that little scratch right there? So it was touched a little bit. It's gonna be a little, little out of shape, but it's not severely out of shape. This is actually a decent rebuilder in the front, but the rear is the real story here. Let's check it out. The quarter is just smashed, but if you've seen the work that V-Tune has done recently on the 911 he was working on, he really made some magic happen. So the actual structure of this thing looks halfway decent. It's what you can't see on the floor. I say V-Tuned in one breath and I say he does amazing body work, but I'll remind you of another popular YouTube name, Cletus McFarlane, that recently bought a Porsche that had some damage in the rear end and well, the engine was in uh, quite an operating condition, and that's where you're going to take a big gamble on this car. I tried looking this one up to see if they had the engine status on it. It's not on the website yet, so this is a true gamble, uh, especially if it's listed as an on-runner without really knowing the condition of the engine itself. This is a 570S. I believe this is a 2018. So this is a very new model. 570s and in my opinion this is the mclaren that i would love to not only rebuild but own just because these cars when they come out they're over two hundred thousand dollars but being that mclaren hasn't had the best reputation for reliability they drop in price pretty quickly. That's also translated to the salvage auction prices. And so once in a while, you'll see these cars go for an incredible steal. This is zip tied shut, so we can't open it. But on these McLarens, they're made in a way for the frame rail to actually just pop off the structure. So even though it looks halfway decent from here, not quite sure whether that's something we could repair and reuse or whether we need a new piece. This right here looks pretty darn straight, standing from right here. Now looking at the front passenger side wheel, we definitely have a suspension issue over here, a destroyed wheel. You need a new one of those. Anytime you push the face and generally the wheels are no good. And I'm looking right here. This is the strut to pop the door upward. And I don't see any sorts of cracks or bends in the structure. It's very, very difficult to get a good look in here, but you could see where that front tub starts, and it looks to be in very, very good condition. We've got the massive, massive carbon ceramic McLaren brakes there. And this car overall, I mean, what a spec. This color is something I've never seen on a McLaren. The interior has full leather. Some of these come with leather and Alcantara. Unfortunately, we gotta get these windows sealed up so that no more dust and dirt gets in here. We've got the keys right there. So. This car, I'm sure with a jump, I know people do not like for me to tell you to jump an exotic car, but with a battery charge, I would guess might fire right up depending on whether there's one of those electronic airbag shutoffs or not. 149 miles on the clock. This is a really special car. Is it open? It is not open as well. Although the window wants to open for me, but this is a super, super special car. Look at the carbon fiber everywhere. Look at the beautiful, beautiful glass lid engine cover. Just incredible. It's amazing how different this car looks in person compared to just a standard 488. It's got those huge carbon ceramic brakes, but I want to get a closer look at our damage here. So it's like the door skin itself actually popped off the door. You could see where it glues in place there. Yes, factories use glue now to glue body components together. I'm sorry to break the news to you, but our door is pretty well destroyed here and the door inside as well. It's got a crack right there. And then our quarter panel, that's our issue. We got this lower rocker area here and our quarter panel all pretty much needs to be replaced. But this is definitely a car that can be repaired. This is a beautiful car, one that will probably sell for a good amount of money, but is really, 
really worth it. All right. Oh my God, this is a beautiful, beautiful. This is incredible. Just absolutely incredible to see how far these cars have come from like my 360, which again, I'm not trying to compare things at all, but how basic and how plain the 360 is and check out the beautiful materials that are used just on the door panel. And then this floor with that aluminum, it's like a diamond plate, but it's an even cooler design in the floor there. The carbon fiber is just everywhere. I gotta look up what this car costs. I'm guessing what, half a million dollars? Only a hundred miles on it. Well, we gotta ask the next question. We really gotta ask the next question. Can we turn it on? Oh, the only thing that's annoying, look, it looks like somebody might have spilled a drink during the crash. That's no good right there. Let's pop that engine cover and see what it looks like under there. Ooh, this glass. Glass is usually really heavy, super, super light. And just look at how beautiful this is. This is a brand, brand new car. Just incredible how beautiful this thing is. Okay, right here. And it's dead. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh there we go. There we go. Just so you guys know, Ferrari confirmed it's 105 degrees out here today. And it feels all 105 degrees worth. Anytime you're buying these cars with any sort of side swipe or door damage, you definitely want to check out the interior. You can see the side right here, the door sill that's made out of carbon fiber. Check out how it sits on this side. And you can see it's popped up a little bit on that side. That's probably not a big deal. It's what the door frame really looks like around it. And then we've got that airbag that popped out. I don't know if they sell this as an assembly, that Alcantara door trim part with the airbag behind it. Sometimes these automakers really like to segregate parts that way they can charge you a little bit more for them. I still can't help but think how perfect of a spec this 360 is, but look at this Audi R8. Now I've been looking for a Gen 2 Audi R8 because I love the Gen 1 so much and I personally believe the Audi R8 is the perfect everyday supercar. It's one that can be used. If you got to repair it, you can work on it and you can get parts at an Audi dealership, something that's a little bit tougher with Ferrari and Lamborghinis. However, this one right here looks actually like a great project, clearly on the driver's side here, pushing the hood up, folding it, and man, this hood, I've never seen one that's folded almost completely into a V like this, but that is pretty nasty. If we look over here, besides a little bit of superficial damage to the pillar, cracked windshield, this would make for a great project. Now, there are all sorts of support beams and things that run all in here, but these, like I showed you with my Lamborghini Gallardo project, are something that can generally be replaced. And again, being that it's an Audi and not a Lamborghini, the parts on those metal beams in there are substantially cheaper. They're still not cheap, but they're substantially cheaper. This is one to put on the watch list. I'm betting it is a base Cayman because the Cayman S usually had a contrasting color, lower spoiler, let's see. Regular Cayman, right? Regular Cayman, automatic. It's automatic, ooh, that, that kind of kills the fun. I think that this is okay. I'd love to see what this looks like closer up with that bumper off. I think it took out mostly just the crash bar, yeah. Scott. I think that this could be a really good one because it looks quite nasty in the photos. This is one that if you weren't able to put your hands on, you might not take a risk on it. But in person, it's really nice. If this goes for under 10,000, it's a steal. Because <sighs> these cars sell for about double that with a clean title. Let's see what goes on here. I see that there's some exposed wiring down there, which is probably because the battery's not working. And I think some of these Porsches, you can jump down there. Yeah, battery's dead. This Nothing. is an interesting one. Under $10,000, given that the engine and transmission work, it's a steal, especially if you can pick it up around seven grand or so. Station wagon, super rare to find these. This one is not an AMG, just can tell right off the bat because of the wheels. And it is old man tan, but it is an E-Class station wagon that was totaled out. 
again, the owners of these cars are usually either like dog owners and there's dog slobber in the back or they're enthusiasts so the interior condition is impeccable. This looks to be a really clean, nicely kept car. This is just a great driver. What's wrong with it? E350, 4Matic. Oh, and check it out. Look, it has the rear, rear bench seat. What is wrong with this thing? Let's see here. Lost type unknown. Okay, this is one of those ones we got to watch. This could be a really nice ride. It is sitting low in the back corner there. So maybe air suspension, maybe it rode up over something under undercarriage. Wow, really a, a nice, nice clean station wagon E-Class. It smells like chicken nuggets and crayons in here. If you don't get the crayon reference, that's what all old German cars smell like. This is what always happens, all right? You see the car from this angle, all right? It looks perfect. Yeah. But what what do you see right here? We have I see the side airbag deployed and I see the kind of diffuser there. Exactly. So, well no, this is this is the air intake from the opposite side obviously. So, if we come around, see what we got. Oh man. I wanted to love this. Yeah, I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to love this so bad. These cars are incredible. And what do we have in here? So this is a um Tiptronic Tiptronic transmission. So the the it's less desirable. She can't say that. You can't <laughs> no, but look at I mean it's shredded so hard on the side. You can actually see is that the window actuator or motor right there? It looks like it. It's probably cables. Cable. Oh man. So this is gnarly. I mean, okay, the, the fender actually is pretty good. It's the door and the quarter, man. And then behind there, that unibody's got to be pushed. And what's it look like in the interior? Tough to see, really. I would have to imagine it pushed the whole wheel well in and everything. I mean, this is a lot, a lot of work. V-Tune could fix it, I know that. But me, this is, this is a tough one. Such a beautiful car, though, man. Look at how it just... The impact here pushes everything, kinks it all up here. It is a, this is a really nice shade of black with a really nice metallic in it too. Something special, something very sought after here in the States. Do you have these over there? Honda S2000s. Ten a penny. Really? Ten a penny. We've got loads of them. The value of these have skyrocketed. And look at really? this one. They are peanuts. Yeah, people love these, and this maybe, one looks maybe I'm like. Wrong. A, Last time I looked, they were peanuts. So far, it looks like a great project. Hundred nine thousand miles, which is not bad for a Honda. We got a couple sets of keys in there. If we look, we've got a stick shift, which I'm pretty sure is pretty standard on this car. And we've got a little bit of a front corner smash that looks like a uh, apron. Maybe just needs to be pulled over a little bit. Again, we can't really see. Of course, we got the fender still on it. But this is a very well sought after car. Someone will pay good money for this, even smashed. This appears to be a flood car as well. Yeah, it says flood on the sticker and look at the water line. Check this out. This is one of those really low water line flood cars. Now, typically with Corvette, since everything is electronic, including the door handles, it's near impossible to get into these things, but let's give it a shot anyway. Oh man. And of course, since it's electronic, the window decided to roll itself down. So maybe I can get you a little look in there. I'm giving it a whiff. It looks really darn clean. Obviously with the low water line and the overall condition, this would be a decent flood gamble. The only problem, in my opinion, when it comes to CA Corvette, currently at salvage auction, there's been a ton of them flooded down here in South Florida, uh, is that these cars are still well within their depreciation curve. They are still fairly expensive when buying them new because the demand is still high, which means when the demand for these cars shore up, the regular ones are going to severely depreciate. And if you're the guy left holding one with a salvage or rebuilt title, well, it's going to kill you even more. I've seen these in flooded condition with these low water lines sell over $50,000. And I've seen brand new ones sell around eighty. dollars So financially, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. This. I think is an underappreciated model because they came loaded with great tech and they're sold really, really cheap. This looks to be an S550, got under 100,000 miles and a flat tire. No big deal. We could figure that out. Sitting, uh, well, no, the air suspension looks pretty good from all the way back here. Body looks halfway decent. 
What do we got going on in the interior? Anything looks interesting? Like you say, it actually looks quite nice in here. These cars are extremely luxurious and are a huge step up from the previous generation. And they sell so cheap at these auctions. I mean, we're talking sub seven, sub $6,000 in wow. some cases. But the big question is, does it run? I think that this engine is relatively reliable. Right here, let's see what we got going on. Oh, look, we've got life. Will it start? What do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna go with a yes. This car's in pretty good shape, Scott. Here we go. Three, two, one. Like butter. Yeah. Oh, what was that noise? Suspension. Yeah, it's working though. It's airing up, I can it feel is. it. It's working. Very cool. It's coming up. 96,000 miles. This is a nice ride, Scott. This is a really good daily driver. Not particularly great on fuel Tip economy. What do you think this would go for then? I think that this would sell sub 7,000 in today's market. A year ago, maybe around 5,000 bucks. Somebody invested a lot of time and money into this. Look, the wheels are color match to the paint of the car. I love the color personally. I don't love the wheels. 63,070 miles, not bad. Look at this, this is insane. This has a custom ostrich seat interior. It's got ostrich seats, uh, automatic trans. Uh, everything was again contrasted with the yellow here. Someone really went to town. It's cars like this that stock aren't worth a lot of money, but again, you know someone put a ton of money between these wheels and the you know the spoiler, the custom body work that went into it, that custom interior work. So you wonder what the car was really insured for, because you know on your insurance, you can always add uh, extra insurance for custom stuff like, I guess, ostrich skin interior. I really wanna know if this car runs. We gotta try and start it up. If you remember when I bought my uh, C6 Corvette, which I'll probably be referencing a lot well as we see these damaged Corvettes, it was missing right here. This is the PCM, so my car wouldn't start up. I do see something unplugged here, and that might lead to an issue, but either way, we gotta try and start this thing. Look at all the overspray everywhere. If it goes cheap enough, and the heavily modified stuff that's modified like this can, uh, you could pull the LS engine out of it, you could pull that ostrich skin interior and have <laughs> some parts for a really fun build. Oh, check it out. I walk right past the fact that this is a 500 horsepower Z06. This is awesome. Let's see here. It can't be a Z06. This is not as a fake Z06. <laughs> Look at this. There's no Z06 with an auto, but hold on. The key's in here. I see a key fob, key fob. I see this. Oh, here's a key. Let's see. Nothing. Battery is probably really dead. I don't care. I'm putting on the watch list. I'm bidding on this guy. Is this a 550 or a 575? I'm not sure, but we can guess it's a flood car. Oh, it's got a manual transmission. The fact that it's got a manual transmission, I'm going to guess it's a 550. Oh, there's no badge. How do I figure this out, guys? This has got to be a 550, all right? Yeah, it's got a 2000 date. I can see the VIN plaque right there. 2000 would have been a 550. The 575s are pretty rare to come by in a uh, stick. Look, this car's only got 6,000 miles on it. Let's go ahead and check this out. The carpets feel like they probably got wet. Yeah, you can see some water streaking here. The, wa the carpets did get wet but I don't see any severe water damage on the seats at all. They feel nice, they feel intact. The doors look all nice. This is again, a car that was flooded, but it wasn't flooded very high. Now I'm not gonna go crank over this Ferrari without checking anything out, but what I have to check out is what a gated manual shift feels like. Hold on, let's get in. This is a pretty neat car. All right, I'm in. Foot's on the brake, so nothing moves. Look, only has 6,000 miles on the clock. There's still amazing pressure in the clutch. So I got my foot down. Oh man, listen to this. Listen to that clunk. A little, little bit of corrosion here. You know, that salt water, it basically gets in the air and goes everywhere. So you're not dealing with a perfect car here, but this has 6,000 miles. This could easily be cleaned up and I bet you it drives like brand new.
This one did have a water line. I completely missed it. It's about a third of the way up the door. So what I'm imagining happened is obviously if it reaches here on the car, it's probably not going to go all the way up this way because of the, the big dip that you got in the floorboard down here. It doesn't look like it really took out the leather trim on the seat at all. I'd imagine this would come back to life with a little bit of leather conditioning. The seats don't feel super compromised. I mean, this isn't something you're going to have to go and source brand new seats for, but it's not perfect. I'm trying to figure out how to say this is about as perfect of a car as you're going to get for being a flooded Ferrari. It's also priced from the insurance company currently as a perfect Ferrari. They've got it listed pretty high on that one with fees. It would get in the territory of about, let's say, 20% off the price of a clean title one. So for that much, it's probably not worth it, but time can definitely change these things. So now that you know the actual cost of these salvaged cars, do you think it's worth the risk buying one as a project car? Let me know what you think down in the comments section. And I wanna know, if you had to spend your own money on one of the cars that you saw today, which one would you buy? If you like this sort of video that outlines the condition and sale prices of these auction lots, be sure to give this video a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out the next time I roll the dice on one of these auction basket cases. And I can't thank each and every one of you enough for watching today. I'll catch you very soon.